Good day folks, it's John here from Gingrich Construction. Thought I should do a video on the new framing trailer. We've had it just over a year now. I'm finally getting around to this, but such is life when you're busy. What we opt to set up was a 20 foot V nose, or as some would call it the wedge nose. It just adds two feet, it's not the long V. And it's got an eight foot sidewall, so we have lots of clearance inside. It also allows us to run the long extension ladders against the ceiling. And I'll show you that a little later. Ladder racks on the top, we've only used them a couple times, but it's something that I hate to not have when we actually do need it. As far as weight on the rear axles, I believe they're um, I think they're two fifty, three hundred pound axles, or five thousand, somewhere around there. But we're actually running eighty six hundred pounds on the rear, and then on the tongue, it's eighteen, nineteen hundred pounds, which would be considered heavy. But I'd rather run heavy on the truck as long as the truck handles it well. We find things tow better, and also winter driving conditions, it's safer. So that's the way we went around it. Up top here, there's ladder rack and the catwalk in the center. Very handy. You will notice the one is bent. We uh, may or may not have had too much weight on there at one point in its life. The trailer is a custom built trailer. It's a company close to Exeter, Ontario. Braemar. They did excellent work. We really liked the trailer. All they do is aluminum. And from what we've seen, they do aluminum well. You'll notice here at the bottom, there's no trim here. This actually is the frame. And then they bring the skin down onto the frame. There's no trims anywhere for salt and crap to get behind and corrode. I think it would be this checker plate, but they did a good job of sealing it. Nothing's coming loose. We went with the high checker plate, try to save the paint a little bit. We're thinking long term, hopefully. Just open up the trailer here. Got quite the weather this spring. It's been uh, almost frustrating much work and yet you can't do any of it. Alrighty, so from the back here you can see we did a very similar setup as with the last trailer. Got the as we call them happy ladders in the side and then there's the one up in the top there and then we got three slots for the extension ladders. Three steppers handy at the back and uh, air compressor of course. And trying to keep the same thing going. Down at the bottom there we've got screws, the saws, grinders, impacts, drills, chatter guns, the little impacts. Um, tools all in one place. This side would have all the power tools other than the table saw and the miter saw which uh, I guess it's the way of getting fixed. Nailers. Precepts did the same setup again with battery chargers. So basically, the back quarter here it allows us to have everything one spot dumper tools, with the exception, of course, of the toolbox where we have our bits and whatnot stored. Hardware we've got it all laid out. Um, the bottom that's bolts, cement legs, etc. And then we've got nails. Oh, there might be some screws in that row too, but it's supposed to all be nails. And then tap cons, nails, and then power nails, and some miscellaneous crap there. And the top is, yeah, the place where you don't know where to set it. We don't have a lot of each individual fastener, 
basically what we're looking to do is have some of all the common things we use and then when we start a job typically what happens at the front here we'll stack in however many boxes of nails or screws we need up in the uh, front here we got a pull out uh, it pulls out kind of hard but... Try to give it a whirl. and then we can some roof underlay should be some blue skin in there a bit of poly above the ladders at the back is where we keep tie apart we have a 10 foot long slot there as you can see there's a couple pieces of trim hidden in there as well levels on the ceiling out of the way it's actually really handy we did the same layout as we did before with the caulking allowing us to carry multiple colors just a little bit of each for bad days or when we forget front we've got sections for each thing start on this side you'll see our little generator boxes for each of the guys the safety corner air hoses electrical and broom and a couple shovels you might be a carpenter but it doesn't mean you don't need shovels through the laser in here we're using that on Tuesday after the long weekend here so basically what we end up with an actual ceiling height would be very similar to the seven foot sidewall but allowing us to still put the ladders above what i got the deck guys to do because it's totally custom they lined it with three quarter inch plywood instead of the typical three eighths and that would allow us to fasten stuff anywhere on the walls they made up these crossbars with plates on the end and they're just screwed into the three quarter inch plywood I think we've got what two four six seven of those and then uh, two by ten on the end here is screwed in as well and that works out very well um, if you're on a job site where you don't have a lot of risk of somebody walking off with your ladders it's not as big of a deal but with um, some of the work at least that we do yeah stuff doesn't stay on the job site if it isn't locked up Okay, the toolbox, all of our driver bits, each thing has its compartment for the most part. Okay, here we've got some of the oddball stuff that we don't use every day. And then for the nut setters, they've got an oddball drawer, but all of our regular use items have their own place. The idea is it stays organized, it doesn't always work out, but hey, we got something to strive for, I guess. Drill bits, got one of these handy dandy Mastercraft El Cheapo drill bit sets, broke most of the bits and filled them up with good ones, but very handy for organization. SDS, Recip, staplers, we we'll try to have a place for everything. It's not possible to do it for absolutely everything that we try. Here's our layout sockets for when we're doing structural steel, etc. And then, of course, you got to just throw crap in. The box is by Gray Tools. It is a very expensive box, it was more money than what I expected but we do like it it's got very deep drawers i think they're 20 i'm gonna you know, say 24 inches but check here 20 inches my bet and the drawers latch as you can see here so far we've had pretty good luck with them 
we don't have a lot of drawers coming open actually it's none we had one problems with one drawer but the latch was bent so we straightened that and it's working well so that's a basic overview of what we work out of five days a week anyway and for the most part there's not a lot of things we would actually change we're pretty happy with it i think it was worth the time spent with the other trailer changing and modifying to find a system that worked well for us of course this system is not going to work for everybody the type of work you do and the type of personalities you have on your crew will definitely make a difference but i find it's well worth the time to have an efficient clean system laid out organized there's a place for everything and if you keep on top of guys to follow that system long term you simply get more work done in the hours that you're on site i guess i shouldn't forget there's one other thing we did this box in the bottom here we're running an inverter it's a 24 volt system inside that box there is eight six volt batteries and yeah eight we had been running four and that was getting us to about wednesday or thursday we couldn't do the week sometimes it even ran out on tuesday if we're running heavy load so i added four more this weekend so we're hoping that we'll easily last a week and there's our put that together um, the 27.6 volts of batteries are at currently allowing us to keep an eye on them so we know if they're charged or how well how much charge we have and then the little screen at the top is showing how much current is actually going into the trailer currently we are plugged in on shore power pulling 1.47 amps and what that allows me to do is set how fast um, the charger charges and I can turn that up watch the screen and then I can set it at a point where I don't trip breakers and with the shore power same time as it's charging those batteries it's charging these so depending what's happening we actually can't have the charger pulling the full 15 amps or we'll just trip breakers because of the other load in the trailer so that's why i did that i don't know if we would really have needed to do that but if you have the charger set say at pulling five to six amps allowing you to be able to pull run the microwaves for instance and charge batteries you can't really get more than five or six amps on the charger and then that means it's going to take you a couple of days in order to charge up all eight of those batteries and we don't always have two days to do that so i tend to turn it up more pull about 12 or 13 and get it charged in 24 hours Alrighty guys, thanks for watching and keep on working hard and getting stuff done. There's many depending on us who aren't willing to work.